All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. We got something a little bit different today. We have posted some golf content on the channel before, but I really want to sink my teeth into it because this is something that I really do want to do weekly, or at least for big tournaments moving forward, or at least tournaments that are worth looking into, uh, which I'd consider the Arnold Palmer Invitational being one of those. So welcome back to the channel. We're diving in with a golf video here. Like we always do in all of our other sports picks videos, we'll talk about everything that we're considering and liking but keep an eye on the pinned comment. That is where all of my final plays, so I'm actually going to roll with myself. Those plays will live. So we'll throw a lot of round uh, round leaders, numbers, top 10, top 20s, all that at you in this video, just because it's something looking at the numbers I do like right now, but what I'm actually going to be rolling with myself and held accountable to for our record will be in the pinned comment of this video. So make sure to keep an eye on that. But let's talk some Bay Hill here. So we're going to be jumping into a site called Bet the Number. And by the way, I have no affiliate with this site. It's just, I guess, more or less me giving props to a site that does a damn good job of breaking down courses as well as trying to find some players uh, to fit into it. So again, no affiliation, just shout out to Bet the Number here. So we're looking at Bay Hill, uh, the Arnold Palmer Invitational Tournament here and a few things that I want to note uh, for this course. Uh, first off, the approach shots are going to be absolutely crucial. You can see greens in regulation here. Uh, tour average sitting at 66%. Bay Hill, 55.6%. So it's a tough course when it comes to greens and regulation, um, as as with fairways and regulation, but it's a little bit uh, similar as well, right? Um, and you can see bogeys per round. This is a tough course. Bogeys per round sitting at 3.36 for the API. If you look at tour average, under three. So um, actually, one other thing that I wanted to note, excuse me. Uh, if you look at par three and par four scoring, both of these are obviously, you know, slightly above um, their par. 4.17 at Bay Hill for a par four, 3.15 per par three, uh, tough course. But what you'll notice is there are gettable par fives on this course. Par five scoring average, 4.73. That's actually a little bit higher than tour average, but still under par there. So if we were to kind of bucketize the things that I'm looking for on this course, first off, you know, we're looking at par five scoring and approach shots. Those are going to be absolutely massive stats and where you rank in the field for us to like you here, okay? Um, secondarily, I'm going to be looking at apex because these greens are very, very, very fast. If you can't get the ball high, it's going to be tough to hold some of these greens. Now, they have some, I would say the green sizes, you know, are mediocre, right? Nothing small, nothing crazy, but still holding those uh, Bermuda grass fast greens is going to be a a, a tough task. So hitting the ball high, being able to manipulate the spin and whatnot is going to be huge. And speaking of manipulating the spin, we're going to want to see guys that hit it into the fairway because coming out of the rough here is going to be difficult, especially when you cannot hold the greens as well as some other courses, right? So keep that in mind here. Again, if we kind of recap, approach shots, par five scoring, hitting the ball high, and then I would say hitting the fairway are sort of four metrics that we've looked at. And what's great about this site is we can kind of create our own model right here on the site. You can see I added in all of my, uh, you know, desired stats and whatnot and all the information that they have just pumped in already. And then we're good to go, right? Like it kind of spits out what we should like here. Um, and you can see I have it, strokes gained approach. That's what we're looking at. And then apex, par five scoring and fairways, hit percentage, all going to be absolutely massive. Um, in terms of odds here, you can see we like a few guys uh, that are ranked up there with the outrights, but you can also filter to favorites. And now let's kind of go through these guys um, as I like them here. So we'll start at the top. Rory is a guy that should be able to play this course very, very well. And if we look at him as of late on this course, he has uh, tied second, tied 13th, tied 10th, tied 5th, and tied 6th, dating back to the five recent times that he's played on this course. And he even has a quote out there saying I, he wish he brought more of his good stuff or something last year because uh, finished tied second could have obviously um, won that one. But why do we like Rory in this one? Uh, well, starting it off, strokes gained overall, number one in the field, right? But approach kind of lacking, apex kind of lacking, but this is absolutely stellar. Your par five scoring average for Rory, second best in the field. I believe it's Wyndham Clark is the only one that outranks him here. If you give me Wyndham Clark versus Rory on a par five any day of the week, I'll take Rory. So stats are stats, but we know that. And then Rory's also been hitting plenty of fairways within his last 10 rounds here. So the two things, strokes gained and apex where he may be lacking at least in terms of what we want to see. It's great 
gray right now, meaning it's middle. We want to see it green. We know that he has the talent to be able to do so, right? So Rory, I could definitely see myself laddering top 10, top 5, and then even out right here. He's kind of the most chalky pick that we have on the board as of uh, right now for sure. Moving on, we have Ludwig Aberg. Uh, the dude's been playing... Up and down, I would say. You can see Genesis last tournament tied 19th. Um, Pebble Beach came in second, uh, tied for ninth at the Farmers. And the thing that we really like, and it stands out with him, is going to be the strokes gained on the approach, as well as hitting it higher over his last 10 rounds than anyone else in the field here. His lack may be when it comes to par 5 scoring, and definitely when it comes to hitting the fairway. This is probably a spot where we'd consider maybe a top 10 or so but again that fairway hit percentage could be something that keeps us away from us actually touching it but you know altogether that stroke scanned approach is like I said number one on my list and there's only six guys better than him and we have two of them identified on our list six guys better than him in the field that can do that so I do like that spot for him and again holding those greens uh, is going to be massive but even though he hits the ball high if he can't put it in the fairway uh, there could be a little bit of an issue here and 39 guys better than him in terms of his the fairway but again maybe it's a make cut type of thing and and, and that type of thing so uh, moving on here another guy that we do uh, we have seen plenty of recent success from uh, Burns t10 t3 10 t6 last four here um, in terms of where he's what he's done at Bay Hill kind of a mixed bag here two years ago he did come tied ninth um, but you know I think this course is so difficult that it may not matter overall like your recent history it definitely helps if you have it like when we see you know uh, or is it Rory's sort of history here right you love to see that but I don't know if we look at this and say okay you know what because a guy hasn't finished well we hate it I think it's more the the archetype of the player that we're going to focus on here um, and what I love about Sam Burns is going to be that apex par 5 scoring average and then that fairway hit all kind of green it's a light green rating in terms of fairways hit but um, obviously this is a very good player and, and in fact if we look at where the model and again that's kind of based on my weighing with these percentages here so maybe that isn't the most uh, accurate of things because I'm deciding what I weigh more but our model and what we like Sam Burns actually is the number one guy here um, but let's filter this back to the order we're going in. So Min Woo Lee, uh, this could be one that we're considering kind of laddering maybe top 20, top 10, potentially top 5. I'll tell you, I don't love the fact that, uh, you know, last week finishes tied second with a minus 14 score. Why I don't love that is just because everything before that, you know, was kind of like meh, right? Making cuts, but not doing all that great. Uh, you could see what happens to him after he has a decent finish here at the Zozo. Tied sixth, right? Follows it up by tied 21st. Can he put two weeks together? Potentially hopefully, um, but we love the apex and the par five scoring. But like I said, the thing that concerns me here big time is going to be hitting the fairway. And he's one of the guys, at least on our list here, uh, that is in the red when it comes to fairway hit percentage. So could be a guy that I'm kind of like, Whew. all right, pump the brakes. We like him. Don't need to necessarily bet on him, right? Now, one of my favorite guys here that we can dive into is going to be Adam Scott. I got to turn a blind eye to the 53rd ranked in terms of fairway hit. That is tough to see. But this guy has been cashing top 20s like it is his job. His odds for top 20 right now are plus 150, which any plus money play in golf uh, you do like, right? And he's had like mass success here at Bay Hill but you could see uh, his strokes gained um, overall I guess total and everything like that like he is uh, playing fairly well and this is a tough putting course not the most difficult because it's just fast green so the putts aren't going to be all that ridiculous but he's been putting fairly well in the last couple weeks here and again it's kind of comes down to the odds I like the fact that plus 150 for top 20 um, and we're looking at a guy that's 12th ranked when it comes to approach the only thing like I said I kind of got to swallow my pride here is going to be that fairway hit percentage Shane Lowry another guy that's just checking all of our boxes uh, tied fourth last week has had terrible success at Bay Hill like terrible three out of the last four years been cut tied uh, or came in 67th in 2023 but look at the strokes gained approach 10th third when it comes to apex 13th par five scoring and he's hitting fairways left and right he could blindfold him and he hits fairways so this could easily be sort of a top 20 play for us as well i don't mind taking shane lowry here um tied for fourth at the cognizant last week uh which you know that's good to see but again, he's been kind of hit or miss. Like that was kind of his first time in a, in a few weeks here that he said, hey, what's going on? I'm going to go out there and play some good golf, right? We hadn't really seen that. Um, moving on here, we got Tom Hoagie. 
I love this pick as well, like a lot. I mean, the fact that you're getting plus money for top 30 uh, for a guy that's come top 30 in his last four uh, results here, AT&T, the Phoenix, Genesis, and then Cognizant. Um, and you're looking at, you know, Genesis, tough course as well, finishing eighth there. Number one guy when it comes to strokes gained approach. Like, literally, we could take this favorite so we can filter strokes gained approach. Hoagie is literally right there. So I don't see how we can, uh, you know, ignore that. Does he have everything else we're looking for? Maybe not. But again, for these odds, it could easily be a top 20, top 10 type of a play for a decent payday here. And then a couple throw-ins. I would say my least favorite two is probably going to be Christian Bezadenhout. Um, as well as Sammy Valmaki. He's been playing okay, right? You know, he got cut last week. A few weeks back, Mexico Open came in second, kind of played out of his shoes. Um, and then Bezaden, how we like the par five scoring. We like the strokes gained on the approach, but he's wild. He's not always going to hit fairways for you. So these are two almost long shot-esque players. You can see Valmaki is plus 220,000. <laughs> So I don't think we're going to be taking that, but could it be a top 30 play? Potentially. I don't necessarily hate the look of that, right? Um, then Bezayden out, I'm probably going nowhere above top 20 if I had to throw that out there. So these are the, th the what, one, two, three, four, five, nine guys that I'm liking. If we kind of look here and start to filter around and show you guys that I kind of considered as well, um, Jake Knapp obviously kind of scorching right now, uh, playing really well. Ty I won the Mexico tied fourth and cognizant this could definitely be one that i'm thinking of i just think that his odds are a little inflated right now so he didn't really make the favorites list here you could also take a peek at uh you know matthew pavon or cam davis those are two options that i considered didn't really make the final uh the final cut there and then austin eckert actually looks like he could be good here but like are we really going to take a guy that just won his first um that was his first win is he going to go back to back? I don't necessarily think so. I do like the odds, but the dude's probably celebrating the hell out of life right now uh, in terms of, you know, winning last week and whatnot. So I don't necessarily think we need to, to get too greedy and look at him. But those are a few names we're looking at. Again, guys, keep an eye on the pinned comment. That is where my final plays for this will live but yeah we kind of ran through that quickly let me know in the comments how you guys would like to see this differently because this is obviously the start of a journey i would say would you like me to break down the course a little bit more look at the last year's winners the last year's outcomes or do you like me just given that sort of you know bird's eye view of the course and then here are some players that i think fit the bill let me know in the comments what you think of that and uh yeah very excited to uh, start doing some golf content guys again can I promise every week? I'd like to, uh, but that is asking asking a lot with all the content that we're making as of right now. But you know what? I'm going to try and fit it in and try and do more and more golf content because if you don't know, it's one of my favorite sports to play. Maybe my favorite sport now as I'm getting older, uh, but definitely one of my favorite sports to bet on. And we don't really make many videos of it. We have a couple master's videos on the channel, but... I kind of want to sink my teeth into it. So let me know, guys. All feedback is appreciated, and we'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace out.